Okay, welcome back. Today we have a U2000, and there's something very special about this chassis, and that's this little board, daughter board right here. I've never seen this before, and I'll go into this in more detail once I show the chassis off. But this was sent to me because it's got some vertical tearing and jitteriness, and the screen's just basically going all haywire, and the colors are pretty much crap. Uh, so I'm pretty sure RE11 is going to need to be replaced, but it has been recapped, but it's going to need a full reflow inspection and all the normal stuff. Uh, the neck transistors are all wonky, and somebody has, you know, done some hackery, hackery to it, as you see there. So that'll have to be fixed as well. Uh, but let me show you what's actually happening here. This is the best I can get the colors to look without cranking up the color pot. So that shouldn't, that's not something you should have to do. But if you look here, there you go. See what's happening? This is uh, obviously, oh, and then it clears itself up. Uh... It depends on what's on the screen and when it transitions. See, it's fine now. But that, see when it transitioned there, it got haywire. So you can see all what's happening here. Um, tearing and jitteriness and all kinds of haywire stuff. Yeah, that's that's not good. So this set, this was fine when it got turned off. It sat for a year, and when it turned back on after a year of sitting, this is what happened. And almost every time that I have ever seen anything like this occur, see now this screen's fine. Uh, it's either this chip right here, U701, or one of the components around it. So uh, I'm gonna focus on this area right here because I've seen some of these little uh, poly caps be broken and bro broken legs on, especially this little blue cap right there. I've seen that be broken before. These all seem okay, but I'm gonna focus on this area and possibly shotgun in a new U701 because I've seen this be bad and cause this exact issue. So, see, and then now this screen's fine. So, um, yeah, we're gonna focus on this area, but so let's get this off of the tube and give it a good look over, because I wanna show off this board. I have never seen this before, very interesting. So, let's check all this out. Alrighty, so here we have the full chassis. So let's just go ahead and do a breakdown of this so we can talk about things better. So we'll remove the remote board and we will remove the neck board we'll set that aside for now and we'll take this off of here alright so What's very interesting to me is this mod. This is what looks like a factory mod, clearly a factory mod, but I've never, in all of the time that I've worked on the 7400, 7500, 2000, 5000, not once have I ever seen this mod. I have no idea what it's doing, what it's for. Never seen it before. It's running to the Video B Plus header. It's replacing uh, Q808, I think it is. I don't know why it's running to this diode. It's running to here. They've added a diode in circuit. Uh, and then it's running to the header pin here that ends up going straight to the brightness pot. This red wire goes to this header pin and that runs right to the brightness pot. So I have no idea what this is doing. I don't think it's part of our problem. I'm still focused on this area. This is the horizontal oscillation circuit here and that's why it was having the jitteriness. I'm still convinced it's something in this area. But I have never seen this before. Very odd, very interesting factory mod that I don't know what it's doing. And something else that's, that I happened to notice when taking this apart, I was running this for about 10 minutes, tweaking some stuff, trying to figure out what was going on. And almost every U2000 I've ever messed with, ever, the heat sink here for the HOT gets super, super hot. Way hotter than the 74, 75, 5000 heat sink. This, on the 2000, for some reason, this gets very hot and it roasts these components, it roasts the uh, cap here and it completely roasts the width coil. The width coil is, gets very brown and brittle and breaks, and if you touch it, this is not that case. Uh, this is a high hour unit. It's covered in dirt and, and we've got resistors that have lost their coating from heat over the years. Uh, but what's interesting is that this was ice cold. This thing did not get warm really at all. Lukewarm at best after 10 minutes, and that is another very odd activity for the U2000. So I wonder, because this is running to the Video B+, and it's part of, this, part of the circuit here is obviously picking up off the... I wonder, 
off the video B plus I should say I wonder if it's causing a secondary reaction to keep this cooler and maybe that's what this mod is if that's if that's the case then this needs to be incorporated on every U2000 out there so I need to research this a bit more and I'll see if I can figure out more information and do some testing and maybe talk about this at the end of the video maybe not I don't know uh, but this is something I've never seen before very interesting I'll have to do some more research and try to figure out what this is doing but in the meantime I want to tackle this area here to see if maybe we can figure out if we can take a look and see if we have any broken components and everything looks okay. Uh, obviously we know that the chassis powers up and works. So we don't need to worry about I do want to see if B plus is still okay, capable. We'll check B plus later. Because we know everything's operational and functional, I want to mainly focus on this area here. Uh, but I do also want to mention that somebody has done some hackery here with the power connector. Obviously this was in a cabinet that uh, didn't have the right connector and they just soldered the wires right to the bottom of the chassis here and that's not kosher. Uh, what I want to do oh wait a minute what is this? There's all kinds of mods going on here never seen this before never seen this before why are we jumpering pins for the coil? Why, why is that like that? Uh, why is, why is this like that? Uh, there's another jumper here that shouldn't be there. I see a broken pad, uh, but that doesn't run to over here. This is factory. Not gonna mess with that. I have no idea why this is here. Someone's got... They've got the ground. This is going to ground and that's a that's the ground pin. This pin here is ground. This pin here on the end is sink and they got a resistor going from ground to sink. Maybe that's our problem. I've never seen that before. I don't know what's going on with this thing. This is like a hodgepodge of insanity. Anyway, back to what I was saying, this is not kosher, so I'm going to remove this, and I've got a whole jug of connectors here, so what I'm going to do is take the proper connector, so we can actually have this connected the way that it's supposed to be, and I'm going to cut these wires here and just splice this together so we have the correct connection, and it's not, you know, jury-rigged like that, so we're going to take care of that as well. Um, but I don't want to even mess with any of this if this is our problem. Why do they have a resistor going from the sink pin to ground? Huh. I imagine that's a, I imagine this is all factory, but you know, I'm also scratching my head because this was reported as working just fine for a long time and then it got shut off and it sat for a year without being turned back on. When it got turned back on, that's when it started going haywire. So, it's, it's tough to say. Obviously, it's functional the way that it is with all, these, with all this wackiness and all of this wackiness and this wackiness. It's operational. But, I also see this here. Broken pad. They're just jumpered to there, which is fine. And then there's something going on there. That's just a cobweb or something. Got some damage there, but that's just a scrape. Huh. Well, I guess our first step's going to be I'm going to repair this power connector here and then kind of go from there and see what we get. So let me take care of that. I'll come back and show that off, and then we'll see what we can figure out with uh, the rest of this stuff. I'm half tempted to take this jumper off wait a minute we've got this cap here that well it's soldered in but it's not soldered in well you can see right there a giant hole there but it's secure so that I don't think that poses a like I say this was working fine till it shut off for a year and turned back on so I don't think it's a solder joint issue. I think some component has failed. 
So I'm I'm not really sure if this is a cause or this or this. I don't I don't know. I don't think so. But you know, I could shotgun in a U701 just to rule it out. So let me fix let me fix this power connection problem. And then we'll focus on this area and inspect the components, and then we'll shotgun a U701. If that doesn't fix it, then we'll worry about this other stuff and see what we can figure out. Maybe it's this mod. I don't know. So let's do one thing at a time here. And uh, I'm going to cut away in this. And I have a feeling this may be a pretty long video. So I'm going to cut away and show this repair afterward, and then we'll go from there. All right, so here is the completed harness connector work done. Uh, you can see here that I have all three wires spliced together and covered with heat shrink and zip tied so nothing moves around. And the easiest way to do this is you don't want to you want to strip the wires but you don't want to twist them and like lay, them on, lay the twisted strands on top of each other and solder like that. You want to leave all of the strands uh, untwisted so they're kind of frayed and then just mash them together. So you take the frays from one strand and phrase from one strand and just kind of mash them together like this then you flux it and solder it and heat shrink it that's a much better connection than trying to twist them together and lay the two twists on top of each other uh, so we have all this complete now we have a correct connector we don't got to worry about any kind of jury rigging stuff going on there so now let's go ahead and inspect all of our components here uh, where did my I always lose those darn things, but we'll use this set. Okay, so let's, uh, I've got to leave that off, all right. Uh, let's inspect all of this stuff. Uh, okay, nothing broken there. Nothing broken there. I don't see any broken legs on any components. Put that back over. Yeah, I don't see anything visually. I've seen, I've seen this cap here be broken before. It caused a very similar issue. Uh, this is the horizontal oscill oscillation circuit and the deflection chip. So when you have issues like this, I suspect this chip or anything around it. Quite honestly. Uh, so that all looks okay. Changing this out will be a last resort. I was talking about shotgunning one in, but thinking about it, I, I don't want to do that unless we absolutely have to. Because I don't have any of these on hand. I'd have to rob one of these from a working board. I don't have all of my spare boards that I've already robbed all these over the years. So I'd have to rob one from a working board. I don't want to have to do that. Uh, so I want to turn my attention back to these mods on the bottom here. Especially this. Um, I have seen, I've seen this resistor installed in the past. What makes me weary is the fact that it's going, it's grounding the sink input. It's literally taking the sink input and grounding it through, it's acting like a pull down to the best of my experience. This is a, basically acting like a pull down resistor. It's pulling down the sink signal to ground. Why? I don't know. This I think is part of that, this I think here is part of this mod this board and uh, some further research indicates that this is a mod for a supplemental brightness circuit because um, it's picking up off the video B plus and going through some transistors and a capacitor and it's going back out and feeding the brightness circuit so I think this is a supplemental brightness circuit uh, I don't know I've never seen it before but it's quite interesting uh, but I think what I'm going to do is I don't understand why this is here or what purpose this is serving because there's no trace here, not supposed to be, and it's part of this transformer here. So I think what I want to try first is removing this resistor that's pulling down the sync signal to ground. So let's try that just to see what that does. If it makes any difference, if not, then I want to see about removing this. Maybe this is affecting something. But I want to try this first. If we take this off and nothing happens, take this off, nothing happens. I don't want to mess with this. This is part of that mod for the brightness. Then we'll attack this. I've already reflowed everything in preparation, but I don't think that's going to do anything. So um, I think what I want to do is attack this. Let's see if maybe we can get this to work by uh, removing this resistor here. 
Now, like I say, I've, I've seen this before, but why this is here, I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen it cause this particular problem. Put that back on there. Okay. Um, well, there we go. Is this resistor bad? Let's read it, see what it shows. Seventy five ohms, huh? That's almost like a NTSC sync signal. I wonder if this was a mod to make it more compatible with uh, different sync signal games. It's possible. But uh, let's see what happens with this removed. I'm going to take it and set it up here out of the way. And let's get this back on the tube and see what happens. If it still has the, the same problem with the jitteriness and the, you know, the, the tearing and whatnot, then I want to remove this jumper and see what that does. So with that resistor off of there, I'm suspicious of that, especially because it's literally grounding the, the sync signal you know, through 75 ohms to ground, and I don't know if that's enough to cause that type of problem that we're seeing or not. Because I have seen that before, if memory serves, but I don't think it was causing this problem. It could be other things, like this. This jumper here. But let's, let's hook it back up and see if there's any change to the discrepancy, and we'll go from there. All right, so we're all hooked back up. Uh, anode, neck, yoke, ground, power, video, remote, count to seven. Here is our suspect resistor off of the sync circuit. So let's see if that does any anything, makes any change or any difference here. One, two, three. There's a higher pitch noise than there was before. Well, look at that. Let's give it a minute here. We're already doing better than we were. <laughs> but uh, I don't want to celebrate too early. So far so good. Yeah, look at that! Huh! Now I'm tempted to put it back and see if the problem comes back. Huh! Look at that. No problem at all. Let's uh, start a game. Perfect! Well, what do you know? Colors are still junk, but I think this tube is actually kind of going bad. Because the pictures, or the image that this was providing in the pictures that the person that owns this sent me of the problem, the colors and picture looked great. Uh, this one, it's very dim and dark and washed out, so I think this, my tube here, is kind of on the, on the outs. Um, you can see the blue is bleeding a bit there and everything, so I'm not really going to worry too much about color adjustments and things. But look at that, no more screen tearing and work, working perfectly. So I'm tempted to put this back and see what happens. So let's do that just to verify that this is the issue and just not from handling or something and see if our problem comes back here. So one moment. All right, so the resistor is reinstalled there from ground to sink, as you can see. So now we have to see if we can kind of just set this back in place here. There we go. Okay, we're safe and secure. We're all still connected and hooked up. Nothing got yanked out. That slid over a bit, no big deal. Okay, we'll hook our video back up. And let's see what it does. One, two, three. Okay, it comes back on. And... Oh, there it goes. Absolutely. 100% that resistor is causing the problem. 
So I'm very certain that's a factory mod on there because I have seen that before. But it never really caused this from what I can recall. But on this chassis, that's absolutely the cause of our problem. Wow. Huh. Well, let's take it back off, verify it one more time, and then we'll call this a uh, successful repair. Well, I'm jumping the gun here a bit. I still need to do all of the rework on the neck board. So what I'll do is let's, let's shut the camera off. I'll do all the reflow, all the rework on the main board, and I'll do all the rework and repair on the neck board, show everything off, remove the resistor, do all the normal work that I do, then I'll show all that, and then we'll hook it back up and test one last time. So let's get that done and come back and see how it turns out at the end. Well, that's it. Um, I took the brush out. I don't think I filmed it, but I brushed off all of the surface dirt and stuff off the main chassis. And uh, you saw me there do it on the neck board. Uh, the neck board didn't get recapped. The main board was recapped, but whoever did the cap kit didn't change the caps on the uh, 
neck board. So we got the neck board caps replaced, got everything readjusted and cleaned up, uh, solder joints and everything reflowed. You saw the rework on the neck, or I'm sorry, not the neck, the uh, transistors, so all that's good, but those jumpers didn't even really need to be there. I'm not sure why, uh, but we can see here that everything turned out just fine. I'm not sure what the purpose of those jumpers were even doing there. Maybe a preventative measure, but they weren't necessary. Everything is nice and flat now. We're all lined up. Everything is good to go. And, you know, they're relatively secure. I'm not going to move them too much, but they're all lined up and, and they're not flopping around and everything is, you can move it around. They stay in place. So solder joints are good. Everything should be good to go now. So I got that resistor removed. It is sitting right here. So let's get it hooked up, get it tested one more time, put it through its paces, and we'll call this a successful repair. So let's see how it turns out. Okay, all hooked back up. Uh, anode neck yoke ground power video remote, the Critical 7 on these series of chassis. And yeah, I believe we are ready to go. All of the color pots are set to about 25%. Uh, the bias pots, under the drive pots, are at 50%. All the biases are about 25% because these like to be about 25% anything higher they bleed. So that's all preset. Um, we have our remote board here so uh, let's see how good we can make this look. I need to get my chassis, hooked, not chassis I'm sorry, PCB plugged in. I always forget something. So we gotta plug in. Um, the, this monitor came out of a UMK3 uh, I've only got access to a regular original MK3 board here because I'm in the middle of a restoration. So I got MK3 here that we can use for testing just to get an idea. Uh, like I say, this came out of a UMK3, so we're going to see how good we can make it look with an actual MK3 so the owner can get an idea of how well this should end up once he gets it back on his tube. Uh, okay, so that's connected. We are all ready to go. New power cable is hooked up. Okay, nothing too but to do it here. One, two, three. Okay, it comes on. Still got that high that high pitch noise. I think the flyback may be due for replacement, but otherwise, it is working. So we're not really going to worry too much about it. And hey, uh, no waviness, no tearing, no problems. So let's see if we can make this look very well here. How good we can make it look, I should say. We'll skip past this. Contrast may be a bit too high. We got some deep gousing issues here. All right, let's... Uh That's about as good as I can make it. This tube needs some is needs some major work. But hey, I think we've got uh, a successful repair on our hands. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and well, you know what. We'll go in the menu here so I can talk. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that resistor was the cause of the problem. I don't understand really why it would do that. It's a factory mod, if I recall. And it's interesting how it's 75 ohms, which is exactly what the NTSC usually uses, like in your old TV set with your rabbit ears and a little converter to convert the two prongs to the coax with 75 ohms. So it's no coincidence that it, that's how that is. So I'm not really sure exactly what it's doing. I'm too lazy to look it up, but obviously with that removed, the problem is solved. I don't know why it was working previously and now it didn't. Maybe maybe the resistor went out of spec. Maybe 75 ohms is the incorrect, but um, a, lot, a, lot of these, a lot of these mods are undocumented, so I can't say for sure, but it's now operational. Uh, no more issue. The problem is resolved. We got the full reflow of anything and everything that was partially even remotely oxidized or needed to be flowed. That's all done. We got the neck board completely rebuilt, reflowed, cap kit put on that, fixed all the transistors. Uh, and everything appears to work just fine. So, yeah, we'll call this a success. So, thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something. Like, share, and subscribe. And we will see you next time.